Hello and Namaste everyone. I am Gaurav Kumar Patro, a PhD student at IIT Khadakpur, India and L3S Research Center, Germany. I'll be presenting our work on fair scheduling of virtual conferences. This is a joint work with Avigyan from IIT Delhi, Krishna from Max Planck Institute for Software Systems, Prithvis and Niloy from IIT Khadakpur. We talk about conferences in the post-pandemic world. Most of the conferences, including this one, have transitioned to virtual mode since the pandemic. While this has brought many benefits like reduce organizational cost, reduce participation cost, improve scale and outreach, it has also brought a number of challenges as well. For example, participation in virtual conferences needs stable and high-speed internet, which is still not a reality in many parts of the developing world. Apart from that, the participants need to be get need to get trained on various conferencing tools and applications. Another major problem is scheduling the conference, keeping in mind the various time zones of the participants. Our focus in this work is on the fairness and efficiency concerns in virtual conference scheduling problem. Let us first discuss a few nuances involved in virtual conferences. While physical offline conferences used to schedule their events based on the time zone of the venue, such time zone specific scheduling will not work in the virtual setting as the participants in opposite parts of the world may find it difficult to attend. Therefore, virtual conferences need to be scheduled in a time zone aware manner by extending the events to the whole 24 hours of, of a day rather than limiting them to eight or nine hours of a specific time zone. Here in the example, one can clearly see that having the talks clustered in one participant's available time would not help the other participants. Therefore, there is a need to intelligently scatter the talks round the clock so that the participants from different time zones can benefit, which can lead to improvements in fairness and efficiency of the conference. Apart from the participants' availabilities, one must also consider the fact that participants have different interests over the set of talks. Let us now see the conference from the perspective of speakers. Speakers would benefit from good participation at their talks, which can ensure higher exposure for their works. In this example, one can clearly see that the highlighted slot on the left is the worst possible time slot since no participant is available. On the other hand, the highlighted one on the right is the best possible time slot with 60% availability of participants. Now that we have discussed the various uh, discussed various nuances of virtual conferences, let us look at the formal problem setting. We are given a set of participants P and a set of talks T. For each participant talk pair, we have the interest scores which are modeled as the probability of satisfaction of a participant if she attends the talk. We also have a set of uh, time slot S. Now for each participant time slot pair, we have availability scores, which are modeled as the probability of a participant making herself available in the time slot. Now, given all these details, the goal of a virtual conference scheduling problem is to find a mapping from the set of talks T to the set of slots S, subject to certain constraints or with respect to certain optimization objectives. Note that we have limited ourselves to non-overlapping slots, that is no parallel talks. A natural objective for conference organizers is to maximize the total expected participation, which we call as the efficiency objective. Given a schedule, the efficiency can be expressed as the sum of joint probabilities of participants attending the talks in particular time slots and also getting satisfied with the talks. Now let us look into the Partic uh, participant and speaker sides. A participant will get satisfied if her preferred talks are scheduled in the, in the slots when she is available. Let us take this example where both participants, Bob and Lee, like the talks A and B. However, they do not have any overlap in their availability intervals. Now let us consider the schedule one where the talks A and B are scheduled in the availability interval of Bob. This will extremely satisfy Bob while completely disappoint Lee. Now in schedule two, 
both talks are scheduled in the availability interval of Lee. This will make Lee happy, but Bob quite disappointed. Now, uh, take uh, let us take another example with three talks, A, B, and C. Bob likes all the three talks, while Lee likes only talk A. Their availabilities are same as before. Let us think about a schedule which is best suited for Bob. So the answer is the one where all the talks get scheduled in between 0 to 8. Bob's gain from this schedule is 3 since he can attend and get satisfied by all of his preferred talks. Note that the gain of 3 is the maximum possible gain for Bob in this case since no other schedule can beat this for Bob. Now let us see what could be the best schedule for Lee. The best schedule for Lee will be the one where talk A is scheduled in between 16 to 24. As Lee is not interested in talks B and C, C would be indifferent about when B, uh, talk B and C are scheduled. Therefore, the maximum possible gain for Lee is only one. It is interesting to note that maximum possible gain of Bob and Lee are quite different merely because of their preferences. That is why um, Bob is in general interested in all the talks, Lee is more specific in her interests. When such variations are present, a scheduling algorithm may try to focus on the satisfaction of participants with general interest in all the talks, while maybe sidelining the participants with specific interest. Therefore, we must look at the gains of participants individually with respect to their respective maximum possible gains. So we use this insight while defining our normalized uh, satisfaction metrics. So we express the raw cumulative gain of a participant as the joint probability, sum of joint probabilities of interest and availability. Now we normalize it by the personalized ideal cumulative gain, which is the maximum possible cumulative gain for the specific participant. Now that the maximum possible cumulative gain can be achieved only when the participant gets to make the schedule herself with a self-optimizing objective. We use the normalized cumulative gain as the participant satisfaction metric. Similarly, for speakers, we use the expected crowd as the numerator and the personalized maximum expected crowd as the denominator of the speaker satisfaction metric. Now we follow the notion of equity in distributive justice for fairness objectives. We want all the participants to have similar satisfactions and also all speakers to have similar satisfactions. Therefore, we minimize the difference between map, most satisfied participant and the least satisfied participant. We use a similar objective for speakers as well. We prove that the three objectives, namely efficiency, participant fairness, and speaker fairness, have tensions among them. They can be conflicting, conflicting objectives in various scenarios. Therefore, we propose a suitable joint optimization objectives with two hyperparameters, lambda 1 and lambda 2, as the weights for participants and speaker fairness objectives. We call the proposed joint optimization framework as multi-stakeholder FairConf, or in short, mFairConf. We reduce the problem to an integer program and use it to generate schedules. To test the proposed approach, we use both synthetic and real-world datasets. In real-world datasets, we have FATREC, which is a workshop on responsible recommendation. Secondly, we have REXIS, which is the ACM conference on recommender systems. Third data set is on ICML, which is the International Conference on Machine Learning. We cover small, medium, and large categories of conferences in real-world data sets. Finally, we also have a small synthetic data set. More details on the data sets and how they were gathered can be found in the paper. Here we present a few results on the effects of hyperparameter lambda 1, which is on x-axis. The figures plot the participant and speaker unfairness respectively. Note that here the participant unfairness is measured by the measured by taking the difference between maximum satisfied participant and minimum satisfied participant. Speaker unfairness is also measured using the similar difference among the speakers. In the left figure, 
we see a decrease in participant unfairness when lambda 1 is increased. But speaker unfairness evidently increases as seen in the second figure, which implies a clear trade off between uh, participant and speaker unfairness. In the second set of results, we present the effects of hyperparameter lambda 2, which we have on x axis. In, in the first figure, we see a decrease in speaker unfairness while lambda 2 is increased. However, it causes a decrease in schedule's efficiency as seen in the second figure, thereby implying a trade-off between speaker fairness and schedule efficiency. Here we present some results on fat rate dataset. We plot the individual participant satisfaction in the first figure and individual speaker satisfactions in the second figure. It can be clearly seen that our proposed m fair conf has given very similar satisfactions among participants and also similar satisfactions among speakers, thereby improving both participant and speaker fairness. Now let us come back to the joint optimization problem. Note that the proposed joint optimization objective is NP hard. Therefore, integer programming, the integer program will not scale for bigger conferences when uh, why, uh, it works for apparently smaller data sets like Fatrick and our synthetic data sets. So we provide two scaling methods for bigger conferences. Let us discuss these uh, scaling methods one by one. Since the proposed joint optimization objective is NP hard, we cannot scale it for bigger conferences. And note that the joint optimization problem has an integrality constraint since a valid schedule is actually a mapping from the set of talks to the set of time slots, which can be represented by a binary matrix. So we first ignore this integrality constraint. Now the relaxed joint optimization problem can be solved in polynomial time to give us a fractional solution. Then we propose a polynomial time repeated rounding method to get a valid binary solution for a conference schedule. So this is the first scaling method. Now let us see what other scaling issues might be there. In fact, when there are too many participants, getting even a fractional solution may, may not be feasible due to the huge space complexity of the problem. Therefore, we propose another scaling method for even bigger conferences with thousands of participants. Here we cluster similar participants in a pre-processing step and replace them with representative participant profiles in terms of interests and availabilities, which can substantially reduce the space. Note that we suitably adjust the expected crowd metrics to account for the sizes of these clusters. We can then use the relaxed optimization problem followed by the proposed repeated rounding method. We test these scaling methods on REXIS and ICML datasets, which are quite larger than the previous two datasets. Here are some results on REXIS datasets. We achieve quite balanced performance with low inequalities on both participant and speaker sites while maintaining decent satisfaction rates for both. Please refer to the paper for baseline methods and detailed results. Now, since ICML dataset is used with large number of participants, we apply participant clustering followed by rounding fractional rounding of fractional solutions. On x-axis, we have the number of participant clusters. In the first figure, we plot the Gini inequality of the participant satisfaction. Note that higher Gini values represent more unfairness. We observe that the participant unfairness decreases with increase in the number of clusters. This is because with more number of clusters, the individual clusters become smaller and also better representative of the cluster members. As a trade-off in the second figure, the speaker unfairness increases with increase in the number of clusters. Similarly, the trade-off can be seen in the third figure as well, where it causes the efficiency also to decrease. In summary, we modeled a very timely problem of virtual conference scheduling and also showed the possible conflicts between fairness and efficiency objectives. We also proposed a joint optimization framework to generate schedules, which is balanced as per the organizer's priorities towards participants, speakers, their satisfaction, fairness, 
and also the overall uh, efficiency of the conference. In future, we plan to extend the work to parallel tracks modeling and explore group fairness notions for groups based on time zones or sensitive attributes like gender or race. You can find the dataset and codes in the given link. And thank you for your attention. So thank you, Fugura, for the video, I would say. <laughs> the presentation was, was really nice. I may actually, we may actually start with the questions, right? And we have three minutes, I guess, from the moment. And I may actually start, if, they, if in the audience there are no questions, I may actually start with a couple. I don't know if, if you can in the meantime like share the slides so we can can move on between the slides and and talk. Hopefully that in this time you will not be muted. So any any question in the audience, please feel free, feel free free to take the turn on the mic or write in directly on the chat. So okay, probably I will. I will start first. Gura, are you able to, to, to share the slides or you want me to go ahead? Like, okay, well, I will go ahead with the question in the meantime. So uh, so my, my very first question is about, I was thinking about the, um, the problem itself, right? So when you introduce fairness to my understanding is a sort of individual fairness, right? We are talking about a sort of individual fairness, right? So to, to care about the interests of all the participants. So my question is like, like what well, if we extend it to group fairness right do you think that also the size of the groups may actually uh, challenge you like it to find a new problem like how do you think this, this the group the group fairness may play a role because i do understand that let's say demographics are playing a huge role right and so also assuming that you can force some affirmative action affirmative action right depending on the demographics, so understanding that there are some minorities can be discriminated because of the time zone, can be can be something important to consider. And I was wondering, like, how do you see? So, if you already have some consideration about this group fairness constraint in this work, like, which are the so, direction you, you you will take first? So, in terms of group fairness, groups can be thought of uh, in two directions. Uh, for example, the groups can be in terms of time zones. So there might be uh, too many participants from the US time zones and uh, there might be very less participants from the probably some Asian time zones. Now it might happen that uh, when you apply some form of individual fairness, they might ignore the uh, clusters or groups uh, of uh, Indian or Asian time zones because of okay. the yeah, sizes sure. of these clusters. Now. Groups can also be thought in terms of uh, sensitive attributes like uh, gender. So, for example, uh, in case of gender, uh, there might be family responsibilities and uh, different responsibilities which are usually attached to one particular group than the other one. Now, how to take care of these differences while uh, designing the schedule? That's also yeah. another concern. Yeah, yeah definitely. I'm actually so the, 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 the other question I have is rather about the data set, right? So my question is like, like it was challenging to define user preferences over the data that you were collecting from the conferences. Like, what do you think is let's say, let's say the asymmetry to assume that these experiments can be as realistic as possible, right? So because I understand when you try to infer preferences, uh, you may actually have users having binary preferences that you were you were showing the toy example but that's a kind of tricky right because i mean uh probably explicit preferences may help right instead of having a having a score over the so i was wondering how do you think the data set can help or like can, which are the challenges that you face when you when you when you deal with this kind of data set yeah so in the toy example i only showed the binary preferences but uh, in the actual problem setting uh, we have modeled it as the uh, as a probability. Uh, so it's it's like a probability of uh, getting satisfied uh, with the talk if you attend the talk. So it can vary in between zero to one. So if the participants uh, try to provide a ranking of uh, their preferences or 
a selection of their preferences that can be directly mapped to this uh, uh, probability. So okay, I see. It. In that way, uh, the model captures all these things. However, in the data collection process, uh, we had to do some intelligent sampling approach yeah. to, I mean, make it as real as possible. Okay, I see. I see. Makes sense. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you. It was a really nice work.